welcome back to another Tech Tips on Tuesday. Today, as mentioned in the last episode, we are going to talk about functions. Last week we discussed the program on the Raspberry Pi and compared it with the program in the Arduino. And we saw that the program in the Raspberry Pi was a little bit more simpler than in the Arduino itself. However, I as mentioned, we will be using this program in conjunction with the traffic light system. So how do we need to put that program on the Raspberry Pi and as well as for the Arduino in the traffic light function, which we started in the first episodes. So stay tuned for this week's tech tips in how to use functions within the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi. Starting with the Arduino, we already saw functions. So for example, the void setup, this is also a function. And the void loop, which is your main loop function. So within the Raspberry Pi, we also see some functions, which would be line sensor, which would be blue.on or blue.off but we did not create any separate functions. So looking here at the Arduino, we have the function serial.print and we have the serial.print and then a new line. Each time that we want to print something on the console, we need to put in two lines into this program. So if the program is very big, every time I print on the console, it should be two lines. So how can we overcome that? We will be creating a function which contains those two lines. So for example, for printing to the console, I'm gonna create my own function called void print console. And what do I want to print? Well, I'm gonna receive a value in this function and I'm gonna print it to the console. So I'm going to define a string value called text. I have my curly brackets and as you can see the curly bracket opens here and the curly bracket ends there. So within those two curly brackets we can actually put what we would like to show. So in this case it would be serial.print and then the text which we received from the input that we need to and with a semicolon and the next will be a serial dot print and then a new line. So this would be our function called print console. So wherever we have those two lines, serial print and then value A2 and serial print new line, this section can be replaced by print console and in this case it would be value a2. I'm gonna put some marks around that one. So my print console function would be the same as serial print value A2 and serial print new line. So let's check if we did it okay. It's compiling the sketch. Oh, oh, okay. Yep, that's true. It reports here conversion from int to string is ambitious. Indeed, value A2 is an integer value, so we need to convert value into a string because this print console request a string value. So how can we overcome that? By converting value A2, or actually any value which we would like to print, to a string value. So I'm gonna use the function string. This will help us to convert any value to a string which this function, print console, will be using. So we're gonna compile the sketch. So you see, no errors here. And I'm gonna upload it. And since we have value A2, which means the second from the right, the infrared sensor. So let's block it. And you see, it works. So now, we can remove these two lines. So let's save it and check it again because I removed the comments and that's okay. So now I have a function called print console 
So that is how we're gonna do it on the Arduino. And I will be using this print console in the programs which I created, just to show you that what is on the console is really what we are seeing. So how would we do that in the Raspberry Pi? So here we have the Raspberry Pi, and unfortunately at this moment we do not print anything to the console, but we actually would like to do so. The only thing what we do here is, whenever a sense pin 1 is detected, it will switch the blue LED on, and when sense pin 2 is detected, then we will switch the blue LED off, as mentioned, on the on is LED is off and off is LED is on. But I actually would like to print it, so I need to create a procedure which has this function in it. So I'm gonna create a procedure and that is done with the define message. So it would be def and then the procedure name. So let's make it the following. So def blue light and I'm gonna pass a value which would be light on off and remember Python does not have a curly bracket open and a curly bracket close but they use indents and the indents is four spaces so we are gonna trigger on light on or a light on off. So if the parameter light on off equals and now I'm gonna send a message on which means I'm gonna switch the light on then blue dot off so the blue light will be switched off and I'm gonna print because this is already a function blue light turned on by sensor 1 if light on off equals off we're gonna do a blue dot on which means it's gonna be off print blue light turned off by sensor 2. So let's see, blue light turned on, let me put a capital there. So this would be the function, so this is a function called blue light. So function blue light on off, light on off is on, so this is the parameter which I'm gonna receive, so it is either on or off, so that is the function. And on the console, we are gonna print blue light has turned on or blue light has turned off. Now, instead of blue dot off and blue dot on, we're gonna put the function blue light and we're gonna send it the message on. And here, blue light, we're gonna send it the message off. And this is a while true, so it keeps on looping. That means when sense pin 1 is detected, then the blue light will be on, and otherwise the blue light will be off. And that is then done by this function. So the function ends here, and the function starts here. So this is the way how a function is created in Python. So let's stop this, because the program is still running, and it only runs when we restart it with the new changes. So let's stop it, let's save this, and let's run it. See if we made a mistake. Ah, well of course. It needs to be a colon and not a semicolon. Save, run. So now let's detect if this function works on the Raspberry Pi. You see, blue light is turned on, and now the blue light should go off. So again, it's on and it is off. So now we have a basic function in which we can check that the blue light is turned on or off. So this is how to define a function within a program. And then we can use that function within the program itself. 
So putting them side by side, with the Arduino we just did a regular print console as creating a function and left the rest in it. But we can also create a function for setting this up so that the digital write uh, is happening within a function. This is actually already done here in the loop function. And with the Raspberry Pi, we made the blue light function. Uh, it prints it on the console and it uses as input an on or an off string. So that is it for now. If you liked it, hit the like button. Consider to subscribe to my channel for further tech tips to follow on each Tuesday. So next week we will be using the H bridge controller to control the trains. We're gonna hook it up to a train track and we're gonna see how we can program it. With this H bridge controller, we can control two trains. So we have one train connected to here and the other train connected to there. Input power comes in here and we're gonna address it with some input output and we're gonna see how it works. So if you liked it, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get notified for each video to come. And as mentioned on the Fridays, I'm posting the vlog on the continuation of my train track. And on the Tuesdays, I'm posting the tech tips. So stay tuned for a next video. Thank you and goodbye.